So in this video, we're going to find the mean of the Rayleigh distribution. That's what we're going to achieve in this video. Now, to start with, we've got the PDF of the Rayleigh distribution. We've got x times beta squared. x is our random variable, beta squared is our scale parameter, times exponential function to the minus x squared beta squared over 2. So that's our PDF. Now, in previous videos, you can check a link below on how we uh, go about this. But the mean of any distribution, we use integration. So e of x equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x multiplied by the PDF. So in this case, it's f of x given beta with regards to x. So that's our basic rule for our way to find the mean. Now you see here we've got negative infinity to infinity, but x is only on zero to infinity. So from negative infinity to zero, this integral will be zero anyway. So we can eliminate that and change our parameters right from the beginning to zero to infinity. Because the, below that it's got no value at all anyway. So what I have to do now is plug in this uh, PDF into here and let's see if we can integrate it. So we'll have from zero to infinity of x times x times beta squared. So if I'm going to multiply this by x again, I'm now going to need x squared. And then I'll have beta squared e to the minus x squared beta squared over 2 and dx. OK, now I've got x squared beta squared here, x squared beta squared here, but this one's divided by 2. So we're going to have to break this apart. Uh, use substitution from the beginning is probably not going to work. So if I split this x apart, when we found a C, our CDF, a cumulative distribution function, in a previous video, we could integrate x times beta squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this apart now. Instead of having my x squared, I'm going to have an x like this and multiply it by another x. So x times this and then do integration by parts from there. So integration by parts. So our formula for that is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the next integral of v times du. So what we have to do now is we have to try and decide which we're going to integrate and differentiate of these two terms. Now, I said in the previous video that we'd integrated this one, so we know how to integrate that one off straight away. So I'm going to differentiate my x, so therefore my u, I need a du, so I'm going to let u equal x. So if u equals x, my du is just 1. So then my dv is going to be all of this term here. So that's going to be all of my dv. So dv equals x beta squared e to the minus x squared beta squared over 2. So now integrating by that we did a u substitution for that and then what we found it to be was v equals e to the minus x squared beta squared over 2 and a minus sign. So if you check the link below you'll see how we did this but we just did a u substitution for this and then this got cancelled out. And then when we integrated the minus sign it came down here. So that's how we got to that. So now we can just go straight into our integration by parts and plug in this. So our u dv will be this and then uv minus this will be our answer. So uv, so x times v. So I've got minus x times e to the minus x squared beta squared over 2. So that's my uv taken care of. So that's part of my answer. But let's not, let's not forget our parameters of integration. So these will also require our parameters. So 0 to infinity. So this here will be calculated from 0 to infinity. And then what we do is then we then subtract another integral. So then we subtract our integral from 0 to infinity of v times du. Well, v is minus e to the minus x squared b squared over 2, and du is just 1. 
So I can just write in this for my V times du. So I've got minus e to the minus x squared theta squared over 2. And then that's with regards to x again. OK, well, first of all, as this is part of our answer, let's see if we can calculate what this is. So at infinity, x is negative infinity. But as our power for the exponential function is negative infinity, this whole thing becomes 0 at infinity. Then if you plug in 0 again, x here becomes 0 and this whole thing becomes 0 again. So this basically is just 0. So that here will just cancel out. And then here we've got a minus and a minus. So all we need to do there is just cancel those out and just leave them as a positive. So I can just change that to a positive if I wish. So now what we need to do now is to integrate this here. So let's do that. So e to the minus x squared beta squared over 2. Now a u substitution for this one's not going to work because I've not got an x to cancel out when I take the derivative of the x squared. But e to the minus x squared, now that looks a little bit like the Gaussian error uh, integral. But with this beta squared over 2, I just do need to do a little substitution to try and make that happen. So I want something that's the square root of this and substitute that. And then when I put that back in, I'll have a squared. So let's let u equal square root of this without the minus sign. So that would then be x times beta over the square root of 2. So then my u squared will be that. So then all to do now is take the derivative of this. So du derivative of that regards to x is just going to be beta over root 2. And then that's my dx. So my plug in for my du, I'll just take the reciprocal and plug that in there. So let's go for that. So let's take this into the u variable. So and also just to check at 0, the u becomes 0 and at infinity, u is also infinity. So my parameters can stay as they are. So I've got 0 to infinity, e to the minus u squared. So that's e to the minus u squared. So that's what we wanted there for our Gaussian error uh, integral. Now, my dx, that becomes root 2 over beta and then du. OK, now the square root of 2 over beta, that can come out the front. But for the Gaussian error integral, what I need is 2 over square root of pi. So what I, well, that's what I need here. So 2 divided by square root of pi. That's what I need in here to make that work. But I've got this square root of 2 over beta. So what I could do is I can multiply this all by the square root of 2. So if I put that there, multiply that by the square root of 2. And then the square root of pi, I can multiply that by square root of pi over square root of pi. So that can go on there. So then I multiplied this by 1, so my square root of pi can go inside here. And here I've got square root of 2 times square root of 2. So therefore I've gained a square root of 2, so then I need to divide by another square root of 2. So basically all I've done is here now is multiply the whole thing by square root of 2, square root of pi, square root of 2, square root of pi, which is effectively just 1. So that will give me a way now to turn this into the Gaussian error integral. So just tidying this up now from zero to infinity, I've got e to the minus u squared du. My beta can come out here, that's in a reciprocal, so I can put that there. Square root of two times square root of two, that's gonna give me two. So I can put that in here, that is what I want. So that will cancel these ones out. My well, beta I've taken care of. So now I'm left with square root of 2 and square root of pi in my denominator. So if I just put that now, I've got square root of 2. And at this square root of pi, I need to go in here. So I need to put this one in here and leave this one on the top. So instead of 1, I'll just put square root of pi there. 
and then put this square root of pi inside the integral. So therefore that's my two square root of pi's taken care of. Square root of two times square root of two, that's my two. This square root of two is here, and this square root of pi has gone here. So now this is still the same as this, and with the u sub, I'm still the same as this here. So now this just becomes the Gaussian error integral. So that's what that becomes there. So this is just the error function. And then my input is just my u. So my u is x squared beta squared over 2. x squared beta squared over 2. So that's my error function of u. And that is valued from 0 to infinity. So I take the value of that from 0 to infinity. And then not forgetting this constant multiple here. So let's just put that in here and multiply this. So I've got 1 over beta, square root of pi over square root of 2. I could just write that as one big square root and put that as square root of pi over 2. So now all that's left now is to calculate my error function at 0 and infinity. Now the Gaussian error function, it follows something a bit like the arc tangent um, graph. So basically it never goes above 1, so that's the value there at 1. And it comes from minus 1 as well, so that's minus 1. And what it would do is it would cross the origin. So it would come up something like this, and then approach 1 as it goes off to infinity. So that would then approach infinity. So calculate this. This should be pretty straightforward using the values here of our error function. So this is the error function of some variable x, and that would be our y. OK, so let's calculate this at, pi, uh, at infinity. So at infinity, x squared will approach 1 squared. So this here will then just only approach 1. Whatever beta squared and 2 is, as that approaches infinity, then this will only approach uh, 1. So that's what that is at 1. So this then equals 1 over beta square root of pi over 2. And I'm going to multiply that by infinity. This is just 1. And then at 0, well, if x is 0, and here our error function is 0. So then at 0, that's just 0. So it would be 1 minus 0. So then our result is 1 over beta times the square root of pi over 2 times 1. So then this would be our answer. So we can take this away. And then this here will be our answer. That's our expected value at 1 over beta times the square root of pi over 2. Okay.